minus one. Tonight, Volpla by Wyman Gwynn. Oh, I'll be right there. Well, come on, you old hermit. I have a buffet on the terrace. I'm coming. So, I'm an old hermit, am I? <laughs> and our daughter says I'm eccentric now. I wonder how the devil she ever found out. From me, of course. Mm-hmm. But you love me just the same. Oh, <laughs> Mac, what got into you? Stop it. <laughs> oh, I reached the dangerous age. And, lady, I'm going to have fun. Well, come on out to the terrace. The hamburgers will get cold. My dear... I'm going to have a new kind of fun. Oh? It's a joke. <laughs> I'm going to play a tremendous joke on the whole world. I had been working for this moment for ten years. And now, Volplas. Three of them. A male and two female. I had called them Volplas since that day ten years ago when I got the idea of creating a flying mutant, which I would teach to feed, play, and talk. Now I was almost ready to play my joke on the world. After lunch, when I returned to the lab, the Volklas were moving about on the mattress where I'd placed them, and the male was trying to stand. They were about 28 inches high. Except for the face, chest, and belly, the Volklas were covered with a soft, almost golden down, the skin was pink. Upon his head and across his shoulders, the male had a shock of fur as soft as a chinchilla. The cranium was in the same proportion to the body as it is in the human. And they were shockingly human-eyed. When the male spread his arms, the span was 48 inches. I held his arms out and tried to tease the spars open. These spars turned backward and ran alongside the wrist almost to the elbow. Powerful wrist muscles could snap them outward and forward. Suddenly, as I teased the male Volpla, this happened. The spar shot outward, adding nine inches to each side of a span. The lateral skin that had until now been resting in folds was tightened into a golden plane that stretched from the tip of the spar to his waist, a true gliding plane, perhaps even a soaring plane. By four o'clock that afternoon, they were ready for their first solid food. Come on now, here, hold the cup. That's the way. Hold the cup. Oh, you're a beauty. You're all beauties. No, no, no. Come on. Hey, don't climb on my back. No, no, no. no stop. Oh, that's better. Oh, hello, pretty one. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So that's the way it's going to be, eh? Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, you have no idea what I have in store for you, my dears. I will teach you a language, perhaps English, or simple basic English. You will have your own crafts, and you'll live in small tree houses, and I'll teach you legends that you came from the stars, that you watch the red men and the white men, and you listen to their speech. And when you're able to take care of yourselves, I'll turn you loose. There'll be Volpla colonies up and down the coast before anyone suspects. And then, my dear, one day, somebody will see a Volpla, and the scientists will observe them. Then... The legends will come. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Don't you think that's terribly funny? I used the metabolic accelerator to cut the Volpla's gestation down to one week. And I used it to bring the infants to maturity in one month. By the next spring, I had a colony of over a hundred Volpla's, and I shut down the accelerator. From now on, they could have their babies in their own way. I had devised a language for them, and I carefully adulterated it with English, as if they had observed us and learned. My Volpla's were amazing. They were bilingual. Well, Jane and Susie went down to Santa Barbara for a week, and... I took the opportunity to ship the male and the oldest two females out of the lab. I put them in a jeep beside me and 
drove to a secluded valley about a mile back in the ranch. Tree, 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 rock, sky, sky, sky. That's right, Chief. That's the sky. All right. Come on now. Everybody out. Run, jump. Jump, jump. Run, run, run. Sky, sky, That's sky, right. Sky. That's right. Take off. Go ahead. <laughs> He spent about two hours chasing the two girls' Volplas around, and then he made a leap for one. And when he spread his arms, his spars snapped out, and those golden planes sheared into the air. He sailed over her, and he rose up, and he hung in the breeze for a long moment, three feet above the ground. Fly! 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 That's right! You can fly! You can fly! They learned quickly and brilliantly. They were not really flyers. They were gliders and soarers. Before long, they took agilely to the trees and launched themselves in beautiful glides for hundreds of feet, banking and turning and spiraling to a gentle halt. Oh, I laughed out loud with anticipation. Wait until the first pair of these is brought before a sheriff. Wait till the newspaper reporters are routed out into the hills to witness this. (laughs) When they were tired, the Volplas lay on their backs with their planes stretched out. The oldest one came over to me. He squatted, his elbows resting in the ground, his wrists crossed at his chest. Before the red men, we live here? That's right. In places like these, you lived all along these mountains. Now there are very few of you left. Since you've been staying in my place, you've naturally forgotten the ways of living outdoors. We learn again. We stay here? That's right. Now look. Look, you, you see up on that tree? That's a bird. That's your food, if you can kill it. How? Well, I don't think you can get at them in the tree. You'll have to soar up above and catch one of them on the wing when they fly away. Go ahead, try. He climbed the tree and launched himself and caught a warm updraft from the hillside. In no time, he was about 200 feet away. He began working his way, crisscrossing back to us, and then suddenly he dived. Ah! He caught the bird. He caught the bird. Bird, bird, bird. We eat. Yes, yes, you eat this. I'll show you how to build a fire. Again, I told them the story I had made up. How they came long before the red men in a ship from the stars. I taught them to point to the planet Venus and say that was the star they came from. I grinned to think of the many stories that would be written in the Sunday supplements. Oh, what a great joke I was playing on the world. We came from a star before the red man? From a star? Yes, yes. The next week, I brought all the Volplas out to the Oakwood. There were 107 men, women, and children. By the end of the week, they were scattered over four square miles of the ranch. They hunted sparrows and cooked them over tiny fires. The little creatures delighted me more and more. For hours, I could watch them play. I could sit all afternoon and watch them at work in a treehouse, quite forgetting to go home. Well, how does the mighty hunter who now returns from the forest? (laughs) Fine. Oh, I've been enjoying the local animal life. (laughs) So is our daughter. What do you mean? She has two of them up in her room. Two what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, What do you call them? I went up the stairs three at a time and burst into my daughter's room. There she sat in her bed, reading a book to two Volplas. Hello there, King Arthur. What's going on here? Oh, nothing, Daddy. We're just reading like we always do. Like always? How long has this been going on? Oh, weeks and weeks. How long has it been since that first time you came here to visit me? Ah, weeks and weeks. But you're teaching them to read. Oh, of course. They're such good pupils and so grateful. (laughs) Daddy, you won't make them go away, will you? Oh, Jane, why did you tell me such a thing like this was going on? Now, you listen to me, mister. Your whole life is a secret from us. Just what makes you think your daughter can't have a little secret of her own? Oh, fine secret. Didn't it occur to you that this might be dangerous? Those creatures are... Oh, Max, for heaven's sake, they're sweet, lovable little creatures without a harm in their furry little bodies. Now, don't get excited. Chief! Chief! Look, where are you? Here, 
Bert, listen. Listen, do you realize there are two Volklers in my daughter's bedroom? Yes, they go there every day. Is there anything wrong with that? But she's teaching them the, the words men put on paper. Yes, you told us men may be enemies. We wish to learn so we can protect. I have thing here. Well, that, that's the San Francisco Chronicle. We've been taking it for some time from box at your house. Oh. I have learned from the others. I can read most of this. It was terrible. The whole wonderful joke of the Volklas would be lost. But I knew what I would have to do. I'd have to, well, I'd have to explain that my family and I had found a colony of them in our ranch and taught them English and taught them to read. I was stuck with that. Men are dangerous. They will shoot us with guns if we leave here. No, no, now, now listen. When they know who you are, they'll leave you alone. Now, you must disperse all your families at once. Send them far away and spread out. No, we cannot leave these woods. Men would shoot us. But I'm telling you... It... Perhaps you are not a good friend. Perhaps you have lied to us. Why are you saying we should leave these woods? But, but it's important. The whole... I mean, you'll be safer. We will decide. The whole thing was critical. It could be disastrous. I went back to the house and up to Susie's room. I found her talking to two Volplers. Oh, no, no. I'm sure you didn't come from the stars. That doesn't sound right. The more I think about it, the more I'm sure that my father made you. Susie, it... what business have you telling them that? I don't want you talking to them that way. Do you hear me? Daddy, you want to play a joke, don't you? Like the time you said I could have a horse for my birthday. You gave me that dried seahorse in the bottle instead of a <sighs> real one. Were you going to make that kind of a joke? No, no. Now, Susie, honey, that isn't exactly it. No. I don't think it's very funny. The Volklers are my friends. I wouldn't want to play a practical joke on them. Chief! Chief, where are you? Chief! Oh, confound it. The fires are out. None of them are around. Chief, are you up there in that treehouse? Where are you? Where are all of you? You've got to listen to me. I made you. The joke of... The whole joke is spoiled. Where are you? Chief! Volklas! Volklas! I was away from the house for hours. When I came back, I found Jane sitting on the terrace. Are you looking for something, dear? Oh, never mind. I suppose they're all gone. What do you mean? The little flying things. I saw them fly by about four in the afternoon. You did? Where did they go? Over that way. You could see them soaring over the trees. Oh, it was so pretty. <sighs> Where's Susie? She's been watching television. She's all excited about the rocket flight, you know. What rocket? Oh, you have been living in the woods. The Venus rocket. My goodness, it's been in all the newspapers. Where are you going? Well, I've got to talk to Susie. 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 Shh, Daddy, the rocket's almost ready to go. Listen. It approaches zero hour now. The rocket stands tall and silvery. The gantry crane is pulled away now. We're actually at least five miles away, watching from the remote monitors. Some disturbance now. It seems to be some birds. Pig birds, like a flock of owls circling the ship. Oh, Daddy, look. Hey, wait a minute. They're flying through the hatch. It seems to be jammed open. Well, this is certainly an unforeseen development. The men on the ground are driving a motor-driven ladder up to the ship, and the owls seem to be fighting them off. Oh, there goes the hatch. It's closed. Those birds are inside, and they're big birds, big as eagles. As we told you previously, ladies and gentlemen, the rocket is on automatic fire. It'll go off in precisely uh, ten seconds. We stared at the television screen. We saw the red blast of fire and the silvery rocket streak up into the sky, the cameras following. Our reporter at scientific headquarters reports that none of the rocket telemeters are recording. The owls who blundered into the open hatch in this heartbreaking accident seem to have disrupted the automatic recorders. The control circuit cannot be altered. The rocket will land on Venus as scheduled. Daddy, those weren't owls, were they? No. No, they weren't. Owls? He thought they were owls. That's kind of a joke, isn't it? Isn't it a joke, Daddy? I'd say, Max, dear, the joke's on you. 
Wait till men land on Venus and find Venusians with a legend about their great father in California. Of course, they left me a note. The handwriting wasn't very good, but then you wouldn't write very well either if your index finger was nine inches long. I sat on the patio and read the Volpla's farewell. It said, The man who made us, we forgive you. We know we did not come from the stars, but we go there. I, the chief, give you welcome to visit. We will try not to laugh at you. Goodbye. Goodbye.